Hey guys I'm Yurizi. This story is all about what if Naruto had a quirk. A reluctant hero in training, but even the reluctant can become great, once they find their cause. Before we proceed with the story, please like and subscribe to this channel if you liked the video and don't forget to check the description for the other works of the author if you liked the story. Let's start. Chapter 31, Heroes Menagerie Part 2 Now, normally we don't do these things, but if they will help All Might investigate a missing girl, this is her address. Mina had a dull face when she saw Naruto lie to a police officer, using All Might's name of all things, to get information from, again, the police. What was more surprising was that they didn't even check to see if Naruto was telling the truth, by trying to contact All Might himself. They just looked up the personal information of a citizen, and were giving it away to Naruto like it was nothing. More heroes had gone missing, and it was getting worrying. Thank you, I'll tell All Might how much help you've been. Naruto nodded his head, keeping a straight face through the entire lie. He didn't allow a single bit of his fib get through his voice, which was surprising considering he was normally a shitty liar, to those who knew him well enough at least. Please, keep this a secret. All Might is undergoing this investigation under the radar right now. Naruto forced a smile and put a finger to his lips. His uncle was one of the kidnapped heroes, he just knew it, and it would be bad if people assumed that All Might had been captured. No doubt, this news would leak, and people wouldn't assume their symbol of peace had gotten kidnapped. In times like this, the people would crumble without hope, and All Might being captured was the same as losing hope. The officer nodded with a wide, hopeful smile. It hurt Naruto to lie to this man. With All Might. Now this won't do. I knew he was injured, and I figured out how his quirk works and the methods around it, but in this condition he has no worth. Fix him. The man spoke as he looked at All Might's smaller, skeleton-like form. He saw the heavy wounds, and while he never knew what caused them, he knew that this was All Might's new true form. Of course, that wouldn't do, he needed a fully healthy All Might. Replace the damaged organs, and place him in the restoration chamber for four or seven cycles. Then place him back in stasis. The man waved off the robots to go and do his bidding. Funny, his sensor said that All Might was quirkless right now, which was impossible considering he was using his quirk earlier. His machines couldn't give him back a quirk, but the damage done to his body could be repaired at least. The greatest hero deserved that much. He wanted heroes as they were when they first debuted, and while he had a costume replica from All Might's debut, it would do no good if All Might was in a lesser condition. He had made sure to make Midnight wear her debut costume, and all of the heroes were in their debut costumes as well. It wasn't really worth anything to be honest, other than collection purposes. Shall we start the cloning process for the other heroes sir? No, we'll clone them to repopulate the planet once we have cleansed this world of lesser humans. The man didn't want to do things out of order. First, the world needed cleansing, then he would clone the best heroes, not to mention he was still adding to his collection. Who was to say he would be fine with just capturing the top 10, and the popular heroes? He was going to capture every hero who had caught his eye before ending the world, those with good quirks, good reputations, and most of all, those who had cemented themselves as legends. Tsuyu's home. We're really doing this. Mina asked with a slightly down expression. They were doing something wrong. We need clues to find Tsuyu, at the least least, I need something that has her scent on it, if I transform, my nose should be able to track her scent for miles. Naruto stated with an equally upset face. They were going to be invading the girl's privacy, and the girl had saved his life too. This was to find her though, because Naruto had the sinking suspicion that she was related in some way to the disappearance of the heroes. After she vanished, multiple heroes started vanishing as well, including his uncle and Super Gramps. If they could track her down, then maybe that would be what they needed to help them find the pros. So, when Mina knocked on the door, she was surprised when it wasn't a parent who answered the door, but a young boy. Hello Sammy Dare, I'm your sister's friend from school, and I don't like asking this, but can we come in and check her room out? Mina placed her hands together in a begging position. The boy looked between them with a straight face for a second, before he closed the door in their faces. Naruto twitched. That was a normal thing to do, sadly, it didn't help them. 
Naruto knocked again with a little more harshness to it, and the boy opened the door once more. Go away, Tsuyu isn't here dash. We're not here to hang out kid. Your sister is missing, right? We're here to try and find her. Your sister saved my life, and she might be in danger. I know we're strangers to you, but heroes are vanishing, and right now, the two of us are the only ones looking for her. Naruto was a lot less nice as he glared down at the child. If the boy slammed the door in their face one more time, then he was going to break down the damn door, and pay for it later of course. Sammy Dare looked a little put off at first, before he nodded. Okay, her room is upstairs, first on the right, take your shoes off. Sammy Dare told them as he welcomed them in. Thanks. Mina passed the boy and smiled, taking her shoes off along the way. Naruto went in after her, did the same, before he pat the boy's head. Sorry I was mean there kid. We're really going to try and find your sister though. Naruto told the boy as he passed him. He followed Mina as the girl went up the stairs and into Tsuya's room. When Naruto followed her, he was a little surprised to see her room looking, very normal for the most part. He closed the door behind them, before he started to glance around. First, we should get a piece of her clothing, something she wore recently that has her scent on it. Naruto stated, and Mina already had that one taken care of. She opened Tsuya's closet and pulled the skirt she had been wearing a few days ago out of the hamper. Unlike a shirt, this would be easy to carry around for them, they could fold it up and fit in in their pocket easy. Not to mention a shirt was too bulky, and bras and panties were too, well Mina wasn't comfortable with her boyfriend sniffing that. It doesn't look like she was taken from home, no signs of a struggle at least. Everything is pretty clean. Mina looked around the room. Books, DVDs, CDs, YAOI manga, seems like none of this stuff is out of place. Mina looked at Tsuya's well-organized bookshelf. Naruto didn't even bat an eyelash. We can agree to disagree on that last one, but you're right, everything seems to be normal here for the most part. Naruto stated as he grabbed the skirt from Mina, and closed his eyes. Transforming, Naruto smelled the skirt and started to memorize her scent. The smell was sweet, she used a very nice body soap. It was a little bitter because of the very small amount of poisonous mucus on her skin. It had the female scent on it as well, hormone-wise at least, and he could smell the sour of sweat on it. The unique blend was easy for him to memorize, and with it done, he tossed her skirt on her bed. Let's go, once we walk around, I can get a better read on her scent. Naruto told Mina, and she nodded. Naruto powered down, and she followed after him as they were walked out of the house by the younger brother, and when they left, they could see the boy sending them a slightly suspicious look. He didn't fully believe them, but gave them a chance. I think this is the first time we've ever gone out actually looking for hero work before, usually it just finds us. Mina commented as they started their walk away from the house. Whenever they fought villains, before joining UA, it had always been where they were out doing something else. This was the first time that they were actually purposely doing illegal hero work. Naruto frowned. We don't have a choice. Pro heroes are vanishing, the top ten are gone. See the road, no cars, no people. Everyone is scared shitless, and the heroes are all busy trying to find the other heroes. They aren't going to care about one missing girl at a time like this. We need to find her, and with her, we might find the others, and my. Naruto trailed off. He didn't want to make it sound like he was only tracking her down to save his own life. He would track her down if she had his ball or not, but right now, her disappearance didn't seem like a coincidence with the heroes vanishing. Mina held his hand, and smiled up at him. They would find her together. He would do anything for his friends, that's a reason I love him so much. Mina didn't say her words out loud. She just smiled, using her love as a way to get her pumped up to find their friend. She was happy that Naruto was so brave in the face of these trying times, because she might not have been if he wasn't there by her side. I didn't know you could track Naruto. Mina realized moments later that Naruto was literally tracking Tsuya down like she was an animal. Naruto furrowed his brow, before his eyes widened. He got a scent. Come on, I got a scent. Naruto took his lowest form and started to run towards the biggest source of the scent. Mina chased after him, 
able to somewhat keep up with him with her athletic build. They might just have a lead yet. Healing Chamber What do you mean he can't be healed? All Might's injuries couldn't be healed through his medical science, and it was frustrating for him. Even with what they could do, they couldn't heal the greatest hero and return him back to his prime. To hear that news was absolutely frustrating, so frustrating that he thought about cloning All Might, a better one, and throwing the original away. He forced himself to calm down though, and took a deep breath. He hated that he couldn't have the original in mint condition, sure, but slightly used would be fine as well. The rest of the top 10 were in prime condition, and All Might, the symbol of peace was an achievement to get on its own. He would have to make do with what he was being given, and that might be a disfigured All Might, but he would live with it. He hated getting second best anything, not being able to heal All Might to his strongest was like getting a husk of the original. He wouldn't think on it anymore though, because then he would anger himself. All Might's DNA wouldn't have his physical flaws, so the clones he would make would be fine, so all was good. His perfect world could still happen. Back with Narumina. A park a children's park. Mina corrected herself when they started to run into the park. It was the middle of the day, but there were no children at the park. With the disappearance of heroes, parents were no doubt keeping their children inside right now. Naruto leaned down closer to the ground, and he looked around. He could see quite a few sets of adult footsteps, but the high heels in the dirt seemed familiar to him. Smelling the air, he smelled a very sweet perfume, the smell of a slightly wet dog, and Shota, all in the same area, but with Shota's scent appearing to be the freshest. Naruto saw slime on the ground as well, though it was nearly dried up completely. The slime gave off the same smell as Tsuyu gave off, so it had to be from her body, but a far more concentrated dose of her. The smells led into the park. But they didn't leave. Eraserhead, Midnight, and Hound Dog were here, but their scents vanished here. Naruto commented as he looked around. He wanted to find any tracks that could be a hint to what kind of assailant had attacked them and taken them. So far, he wasn't finding anything of great importance to note. Mina, help me search the ground, anything that looks weird or out of place. Naruto told her, and she saluted him. Aye aye captain. With that, she got down on her hands and knees and started to look around in the dirt. She would need a shower after all of this, but it would be worth it if they could find a clue to where Tsuya was. Nothing was standing out to her though, not the children's footprints, not the small, broken coin that had mechanical wire inside of it. Not that long black hair on the ground. Is a small broken coin, with mechanical stuff in it weird. Mina asked as she picked up the broken remains of a strange coin. Naruto looked at her like she was stupid, and she gave it to him. I have no clue what to make of this, but I don't recognize it. I doubt anyone in our class will recognize this level of tech either. We should check with the support class and see if they have any geniuses who know what this is. Naruto was pretty sure the smartest girl in the class, Momo, wouldn't know what this was either. His best guess was that it was a GPS tracker of some sorts, but he didn't want to put money on his guess. He could be very wrong, and it could be something completely different entirely, so it was best to see if somebody else had a clue. To the support class. I think this might be Midnight's hair too, but I'm not sure about it. I'm going to bring it with us. Mina pocketed the long black hair, just in case it did belong to Midnight. Then they would know for sure if the woman had been here, and not just go off of her scent being there. It was possible to fake a scent, there were quirks that could disguise scents after all. They needed to hurry, the longer they took, the more heroes that were going to disappear. You dot a. Support workshop, later. Boom. Oh shit. Naruto pulled Mina back when the door to the workshop exploded, shooting off its hinges. Smoke came out of the room, and was quickly sucked up by the vents. Naruto sighed in relief when he saw that the girl that was knocked through the door, he just noticed her, was unhurt, other than being covered in a large amount of dirt, ash, and oil. The girl was a mess, didn't look like she had left the workshop in a while, and was very sleep deprived. Holy crap, her boobs, this girl is stacked. Mina, with a slightly above average rack, felt inadequate when she looked at the amount of cleavage this girl showed off. At her old school, she had been the biggest around, but at UA, she was finding girls left and right who destroyed her. 
She glanced at the girl, and noticed she wore no bra, and she glanced at Naruto. Then, she slapped her cheeks when she saw Naruto only quickly glanced at her cleavage. No. Mina elbowed Naruto in the side, she didn't like being jealous, so she only lightly elbowed him. Naruto rubbed where she got him. You're with the support class, I'm Naruto Izumaki. I need to speak with Power Loader about something, can you tell me where he is? Nope, haven't seen him in hours. He was called out to help somebody, I'm all here alone with my babies, which I need to get back to. Inventing my beautiful babies is more important than anything that takes up my time anyway. The girl walked right by Naruto. Naruto glanced in the workshop, and saw it was filled with a lot of inventions. The way this girl talked, she was the one who invented a lot of them, and a good number of them were pretty complicated. Mina frowned. Rude. Then you'll do. I have a machine that I need to question, and have it rebuilt, but mostly, it's an extremely complicated machine I've never dash Naruto suddenly had the girl right in his face. She grabbed his shoulders and pushed her boobs up against him, face to face to the point she was practically kissing him. Her eyes bulged in interest, and she had a wide grin. Should have started with that then. I'm Mei Hatsuma, if it's an invention you need looked at, I'm more than happy to help. Come on in, come on in. Mei grabbed Naruto's hand and started to pull him in. She grabbed Mina by the front of her shirt and pulled her as well, the two of them being practically dragged into the workshop by the girl. That was a newfound interest in what they had. This girl has no personal space priorities. Mina complained in her mind, and Naruto thinked her on the head for it. Ow. Stop being jealous Mina, even if I think she's attractive, I'll never cheat on you. Also, you're pretty quirky too, anyway, May. I found this coin here, can you tell me what it is? Naruto started when they stopped, and the girl crossed to the other side of a table. He took the coin out of his pocket, and placed it on the table in front of her. She grabbed the parts of the broken coin, and slid them over to her, before she looked at them. The crosshairs she had for pupils seemed to zoom in on the coin, and she looked a little confused. Then she grinned. Ahaha. I have no clue what this is. May admitted proudly, as Naruto and Mina's heads hit the table at that. Why was she happy about that? Not a clue at all. Mina questioned her, and she was ignored. May didn't seem to notice her. Not a clue at all. Naruto asked for Mina, and May looked at him and lifted the coin up. Wen went over towards her gear, and she grabbed several very small tools, before she came over to the table again. She leaned down closely, before she started to quickly and carefully put the pieces, all of them, back together. She melded the wires together without ruining anything first, and from there she started to repair the coin. She grinned. I have no clue, but with my quirk, Zoom, I will repair this no problem. Once I repair it, I can run it through my computer and see the data this thing has. This is such a high-spec piece of tech, somebody has to be proud of this baby. Oh, this makes me excited, super excited, whatever this is, I'll make something even better. May muttered to herself as she continued her work. Mina leaned over and whispered. If she gets aroused over this, I'm out. Going to be honest, still like her more than Himiko. Naruto whispered back. Even if this girl was freaky, she was the good kind of freaky. She was the freaky that was using their freak aura for good, and not evil. May heard them, but only grinned and ignored them. She finished the coin in 15 minutes and 13 seconds. She placed it next to a scanner on her computer, before she started to run a program that would copy the coin's programming into her computer, so that she could see how it was programmed. From where, she could try and see what it was programmed to do. Wow, this is the most complicated programming I've ever seen. Whoever made this is a complete genius, an inventor worthy to be my rival. May spoke as she started to grin to herself. She couldn't even begin to see what everything on the coin was made to do. She got it up and operational again, for sure, but she didn't know anything else. All of the data was super encrypted, several levels of it, and what she could understand dealt with programming that was beyond modern science. She grinned. Do you know what it is though? Naruto asked her with a curious look at her programming. She ignored him for five minutes, five full minutes, and then she spoke. 
She got it. It's a teleporter, you rub your finger along the edge to activate it, and then throw it on the ground. It breaks after one use though, and I have no clue where this coin is programmed to lead to, where was it? May asked with a non-blinking gaze. It could be a clue, where it was found. A park. Then this one might lead back to the base of the maker, but I can't be sure, it does have a GPS tracker in it, but the tracker doesn't track the coin. Instead, it seems to track the location of something else, odd. I like it. It will take me hours to understand all of this. May liked the challenge that was brought to her. This would keep her busy for hours understanding it, and it might keep her busy for weeks trying to replicate and surpass this technological masterpiece. A portal teleporter with a built-in tracking core, the one use limit was kind of horrible, but it prevented anyone else from getting their hands on the tech, which was smart as well. It was clearly made to be mass-produced. Hours. Here, this is my cell number. When you have it figured out, call me. I want to hear the results as soon as you can. Naruto told her grabbed a piece of paper on her desk, and wrote down his number. She didn't have her phone on her, otherwise she would have already modified it no doubt. May nodded and put the number in her pocket. Skipping, skipping, around the table she grabbed Naruto's face, before she surprised everyone in the room by planting a kiss flat on his lips. It was wet, and lasted for only a moment. Hey. Thank you for this, you've given me a wonderful present. You helped too, so don't think I forgot you. May walked towards Mina as the girl prepared to take a swing at her. Grabbing her face as well, May planted a wet kiss on her lips as well. Mina was surprised and blushing in shock when she was kissed like her boyfriend. Then, the two of them were quickly pushed out of the room. What the hell? Naruto muttered as he stood in shock, with Mina. Now go, and next time you find anything this interesting, bring it to me again. What the hell? Mina looked at Naruto and blinked in shock. She pointed behind her into the workshop, right back at May. She didn't know what to make of that either. The girl had just planted kisses on both of their lips, and it was weird to say the least. She was never talking to that girl again if she could help it, and only when she was sure that she wasn't going to have her lips violated again. The hair. Naruto reminded her. Damn it. May, do you have anything that can track a person by their DNA? Mina ran back into the workshop. May looked at her with dull eyes. Yeah, but I took it apart to improve it. I'll work on that after this coin, so give me a few hours. It shouldn't take me more than a few minutes, and this is way more interesting. May started ignoring her again with a smile, in favor of looking at the rows and rows of data in front of her. Oh, the sweet programming fountains of knowledge she was to learn from. Naruto frowned and walked back in after Mina, May seemed very self-centered by nature it would seem. If you can work on the tracker first, then I can give you tickets to go to I Island. If you ever break up with this man, he is mine. Well. My deeply connected friend, give me 15. 10, give me 5 minutes and you'll have a DNA tracker. May turned and looked at Mina with a hardcore look. One that Mina wasn't comfortable with, for reasons, and then the girl was all smiled as she went into her pile of inventions, and pulled out a small radar looking device. This can track anyone who possesses DNA with a 100% genetic match within a 10 mile radius. I took it apart because I learned that it thinks twins are the same people, and tries to track both at the same time. Kind of useless when chasing criminals with twins. May meant to have her invention fixed up so that it didn't do that, but it was harder to program a machine to tell twins apart, and only track one of them. Darn those twins, and their perfectly identical genetic codes, making her machines have fatal flaws to them. Mina stood next to Naruto, holding his hand to calm herself down. This girl was, very upfront with her desires. Minus 30 minutes later. This thing has another flaw the girl forgot to mention. Mina was a little angry when they started to follow Midnight's DNA signal, and it took them to her apartment. Well, we can't get in there dash. Naruto leaned down and looked at the lock, before he transformed, and put the tip of his claw into the lock. After some careful work, Mina was surprised when she heard the click, and Naruto turned the handle of the door, opening it up. Midnight's been kidnapped, we might find clues dash. I'll go in alone this time. 
Midnight is the 18 plus rated hero. I don't want you seeing anything in there. Mina went in alone and closed the door behind her. She had the radar in her hands, and she followed it. Walking into the bathroom, she saw Midnight's hairbrush, and the radar was telling her the hairbrush was Midnight, because of all of her hair on it. It didn't just sense twins, it also sensed any large amount of DNA of the person it was tracking, which was less than helpful. Mina went towards Midnight's room, and she looked around, not seeing anything. Mina covered her mouth when she saw how many of those types of books she saw on the shelf. She felt a little pity towards Midnight in that instance, when she saw close to 100 or more books detailing that, and several about marriage. Well, she was getting to be that age after all. What is this? Mina questioned when she saw a costume doll. The doll was shaped like Midnight herself, and it was currently naked. She looked at it curiously, and saw that it seemed to have been moved out of its spot and thrown aside. Looking down at the ground, she saw a second one of those broken coins. Whoever kidnapped her, broke into her apartment and stole something too. Mina guessed as she put the broken coin in her pocket. That was a pretty big clue. Wait, did they steal her hero costume, or an older version of it? That kind of made sense, but at the same time, it really didn't. Find anything. Ah, 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 ah. Mina screamed and threw acid behind her. Naruto jumped out of the way the second that she threw it, and the acid burned through almost 35 of Midnight's books down to the last pages. Naruto looked at them, before he sighed. I'll pay for it, and apologize to Midnight for you. Naruto palmed his face, before he looked at his blushing girl. She better have found something. Okay. I found another coin, and this mannequin looks like it's been stripped and tossed aside. Mina pointed out the only two strange things she found, other than Midnight's large porno collection. She didn't make a point of mentioning it naturally, as much as she wanted to. Some things didn't need to be said. Naruto frowned. So, we know the maker of this coin did something to Midnight now. Let's get out of here. Naruto said as he turned to leave. He had gotten worried when Mina had taken her time but now they were going to have to try and track down Midnight through another method. Mina nodded and followed after him. They were getting closer to finding the truth. With Tsuyu. They just brought me lunch, so maybe I can sneak out, and check this place out, if I try and escape, they'll catch me. These bars. I might be able to slip out. Tsuyu had a small body, not counting her boobs and hips, but small enough that if she was lubed up, she might be able to squeeze through the bars. She finished off the lunch they brought her, right now nutrients were nutrients, and she needed them if she was to try and get information to her friends. She couldn't rely on pro heroes right now, since this man seemed to have intimate knowledge, and a method to defeat almost every pro hero. The man had captured the entire top 10, and dozens of pro heroes now. That included All Might, she needed to rely on her friends, who this man was underestimating. His quirk, he hasn't used it on me since it was broken the first time, it let him control me, but how does it trigger? Tsuyu tried to think about it as she started to strip herself down to her underwear. A sports bra and regular, non-sexy, panties. She started to build up as much mucus on her skin as she could, the slime spreading over her body. She didn't know how long she would have, but she would need to get back to her cage quickly if she couldn't escape. She squeezed her body towards the bars of her cage, and she was actually able to force her body through it with extreme trouble. Popping out of the other side of the cage, she hopped towards the wall and started to crawl on the wall towards a window. She crawled out of the window. Ribbit. She couldn't escape, not without help. She wasn't just in a fortress of a villain, no, this man went above and beyond, with extra points towards the above. This man had created something that was to be expected of a man that had captured so many pro heroes in so little time. She would fall to her death if she tried to escape on her own. Chapter 32, Heroes Menagerie Part 3 This is another of those core chambers, but what do these cores control? Tsuya crawled on the ceiling and looked down at the machine that was surrounded by a cage of thick glass, with a small crystal being placed in the middle of the machine, a small broken crystal. There was a powerful electrical charge that, just by being in the same room as the machine, made her hair try to stand on end. 
She mentally marked this place down, and noticed that there was a hero pod inside of here as well. The hero pod that was inside of this room seemed to belong to the hero, Ms. Joke, and there was the woman in her pod. Frozen in stasis until she was ready to be used, it would seem her power and popularity wasn't high enough to be placed with all of the rest of the best heroes in the main chamber. She had visited five of the fifteen core chambers already, in the few hours that she had managed to slip through the bars, and she had noticed that so far, there was a hero pod in each chamber. Were they guardians for the core chambers? So far, the only hero pods she had seen in the chambers, contained Ms. Joke, Snipe, Kamui Woods, M.T. Lady, and Ingenium, all of which she noted down as having been captured heroes. Knowing she didn't have much time left, she started to crawl back into the direction of where her cage was. It was soon going to be dinner, and while she was in the cage, she was being treated moderately well. She was being given three meals a day, all of which came at the exact same time, and soon it would be dinner. He had told her this much himself, since she was supposed to survive the end of the world in order to be a reminder for the man. The fact the machines weren't looking for her was enough to prove that they didn't know she was gone yet. This place was massive, how had the man managed to do all of this without anyone noticing over the years, and moreover, she had yet to see another living human being as well. The only humans were in pods, and all of the workers were robots disguised to look like humans. All of them looked exactly the same, and dressed the same though. She had yet to see the man's face either, even though he had taken to dragging her around on a leash. I was the first to disappear, so somebody in my class might have put a connection there. If they can track me down, we might be able to destroy these cores, that might power this place down. Tsuyu didn't know how the man planned on cleansing the world. If she could find where that machine was, then maybe she would be able to try and break it, or at least make notes on it. As it soon, she was crawling as quickly as she could to get back to her cage. She didn't have long now, and thankfully she was close to her cage. There are only two pro heroes on your list left uncaptured boss. Good dash Tsuya froze and looked down at the room she had crawled in, and saw the man walking with a robot following him. She held her breath, and she stuck herself to the wall, and closed her eyes. Praying that she could do this, she changed her body heat and the color of her skin. Using her frog quirk, she forced herself to camouflage herself to match the ceiling that she was on. It wasn't perfect, and her underwear would give her away if anyone paid real attention to her. And my machine, how much closer to completion? The man asked, and he sounded almost like an excited child. The machine, she needed to hear this. Our earlier calculations were off. The machine will be ready by 4.30 a.m. tomorrow morning, but right now, it is slightly operational. Good. Capture the last two good pro heroes, and prepare for a test fire. I'm going to announce to the world the end of days, and provide them with a little preview of what's to come. It will give them time to make peace with their end. There is a small abandoned island nearby has always been a stain to me. The man spoke, and with that knowledge, Tsuya started to quickly and quietly crawl into the next room. She dropped down from the ceiling, and ran towards her cage, squeezing herself between the bars. She didn't have long, maybe a minute or two, but she had to get dressed again so she didn't look suspicious. How was she going to relay this to her friends? As it stood, it looked like the world, he family, her friends, everything she loved was going to come to an end. Tsuya couldn't help as tears tried to escape the edges of her eyes, calm-headed she was, but she had emotions like anyone. She squeezed her eyes shut and closed the tears out of them, wiping them from her face. Part of her wanted to give up hope, because if the world was destroyed, her hope would be destroyed with it. The rest of her was trying to deny that part of her, because she wanted to be a pro hero, and dealing with hopeless situations came with the job. He needs Naruto's. Hoshi no Tama thing to power that thing, if I get it, and break it, no, he mentioned something about a connection. I can't risk Naruto's life for a plan that might not work. If he releases the pro heroes on me, I won't get close anyway. Tsuya wasn't going to get close to the ball, and she knew it. She was starting to get an idea on how the man's quirk worked though, after seeing him use it on several pro heroes, and she had seen several flaws in it. She didn't know just how he was able to control so many pro heroes at the same time, but the man never stood in front of a person he wanted to control for starters. 
He never let anyone see his face either, so one of those things had to be connected with a quirk trigger. You dot a hero workshop. Still don't like her a lot. Didn't matter that Mei was currently their biggest lead to finding the pro heroes and Tsuyu, and it didn't matter that the girl was being so compliant with their demands, considering that Naruto had promised the girl a trip to I Island and had given her some super high tech. It didn't even matter that, even Mina knew this, that both she and this girl had similar levels of enthusiasm about the stuff they liked to do. The fact this girl was so attractive, plus with how open she was with what she wanted and what she liked, finally combined with the fact she was kissed by this girl cemented her dislike. After this girl had kissed her boyfriend as well, and threatened to steal him if she ever broke up with Naruto. What do you have? Well, I was able to trace the tracker in this coin, which I will dub the TPC, and I know where it will teleport things to. Also, with what I had in the lab, I was able to make 20 copies of the coin. May spoke as she showed the stacks of coins. She had been able to remake them, without improving them like she wanted. It was easy now that she had taken the coding in it, and been able to replicate that. Mina smiled. We can take the entire class to save Tsuyu. Wrong. Five of these coins will teleport you to the enemy base, and fifteen of them will teleport you back here. You have twenty-one usable coins though, and my copy coins can only open portals for maybe two seconds, after one to three people crosses the portal, my coins will break. May corrected her with some frustration. The coins she had made were inferior in quality to the originals. She had tested them by opening portals in her own lab, and broken quite a number of different coins doing it. Her TPCs were vastly inferior to the originals, and that angered her. Even with several hours of hard work, she hadn't surpassed this person's invention. If the pro heroes were captured, then only about 10 people can use the portal coins to get here, and maybe 45 will be able to come back through my portal coins. May didn't like the limits of her own copy inventions when compared to the dem originals. Whoever made these was a frustrating super genius, with a level of tech savvy that she couldn't even begin to compete with. She loved the feeling of competition, and hated these feelings of losing. 21. The sound we started with, it can teleport there or back I take it. Mina, let's split up and get some people we can trust to join us, or we think will help. Naruto told her with a nod in thought. They were going to need to build a small team, at least three fighters, and two people more geared towards rescuing. Can you get Ochako? Her zero gravity is the best thing for safely transporting people. Naruto's first thought was her. With her ability to negate gravity, their mobility would vastly improve, and if everything went south, she could be a good method of escape. Who? Classmate of ours. So, her, and Bakugo and Todoroki. Mina asked. Since she figured those two would be better for battle roles than most of their other classmates, herself included. With her acid though, she was a good fighter with both long and short range. Not to mention she was good for a variety of situation. Naruto thought about it for a second too, which gave her confidence in her idea. He shook his head. They dash. The TV in the room turned on by itself, and it was completely static at first. May blinked in confusion as did Naruto and Mina, when she reached for the remote and tried to turn it off, but it kept itself on. The static slowly started to vanish though, and instead of static, it revealed a man in a black suit with a white mask, standing on a boat with a view of an island behind him. The man's arms were crossed behind his back, and sitting next to him was a briefcase. Hello world, my master wishes to relay a message to the world. Don't bother trying to turn the TV off, the signals are all being interrupted. My master wishes all of you have been having a good day dash the minion bowed to the camera slowly, and politely. His robotic-like voice lacked any emotion, showing on sincerity in his words. What the hell? Naruto asked quietly, and he wasn't the only one. Total robot. May pointed at the guy on the screen, and guessed. She was sure that man was a robot made to look like a person, his movements completely gave him away in her eyes. If the man had built a coin capable of bending space and time, then he was capable of building a robot that could seriously pass for a human in looks. What is that in the sky above that island? May asked with some curiosity in her voice. It was massive, visible from a distance, 
maybe the size of a western castle. It started to fly down out of the clouds into frame, and it looked like a high-tech flying castle, with several flying rings around it. It had a massive cannon coming out of the bottom of the fortress, and it was unknown what was keeping this giant metal masterpiece in the air. If May had to guess, it would be some kind of anti-gravity device that was holding it up, with some kind of flight control built into those rings. As you've all noticed, your heroes dash, the minion spoke, and the screen switched to what looked like a view of the inside of a beautiful cathedral. Yet, letting the walls of the cathedral were display pods, pods showing some of the heroes that had gone missing, and in view were several of the top ten, as well. That's Midnight, in her original costume, these guys were the ones who broke into her apart, and might have taken Tsuyu. Mina shouted when she saw a brief glance at Midnight in a pod. The screen switched over back to the view of the minion that was overlooking the island, and the massive mechanical fortress. With that one look at Midnight, it was easy to guess what had happened to her apartment. Those people had grabbed her original costume for some reason, which didn't make a ton of sense to her from an evil standpoint. May grinned. Bring me back some of their tech. Have been captured. Any pro hero that could have had any hope to stop us is gone, having been easily captured with my master's genius planning. Now, before first sunlight tomorrow morning, this world will be cleansed. The minion spoke as the cannon on the fortress, the one hanging from the bottom, started to charge itself up. A blue glow started to escape the bottom of it, and the sky started to darken around the fortress. Lightning bolts tried to zap the fortress, but they were absorbed by the rings outside of the fortress. Now my master wishes you to see a taste of what awaits. What the Desh Naruto started. The island was a beautiful island, it was an old abandoned island with a city on it that had long since lost human contact, but nature had blended with it well. Suddenly though, a massive torrent of blue flames shot out of the cannon, and liberally coated the entire island in seconds. Plumes of smoke rose up high into the air, and large amounts of hot steam rose from the ocean as the flames made contact with that as well. For ten seconds, the island was bathed in flames of blue, and for those ten seconds everyone could only watch, across the globe, in shock as the flames were cleared away, to reveal nothing. Everything that had been covering the island was gone, melted to the ground, or turned to ash and glass. The city on the island, gone, reduced to nothing in the wake of the flames. Mina's eyes widened, and she felt a sudden fear echo through her entire brain, and even May, the excitable girl, dropped to her knees when she suddenly realized what was going to happen to all of them. We're going to die. May was going to die without achieving any of her dreams. Naruto grinned. Now it all made sense, those weren't just flames, those were the flames that were produced by his quirk. Tsuyu's disappearance, since she was the last person in possession of his Hoshi no Tama made sense now. She had refused to give it up, and had been taken with it to that sky castle. The heroes all vanishing, those who were worth anything or could stop this villain, this super villain, it made sense to. The guy didn't seem to want to kill them, and was collecting them for some reason. The reason why he could feel his Hoshi no Tama always on the move, and why the GPS on the coins were saying their portal location was always moving. The flying fortress was in the air, above the clouds, so naturally it would always be on the move. Everything we've done, it's for nothing. Mina had tears form in her eyes. By the time the sun rises tomorrow, this world's cleansing will begin. The screen went black, and then a doomsday clock appeared on the screen, counting down until the start of the end. You're, grinning. May asked with a shocked look on her face. Mina's head spun and looked at Naruto in shock, before he placed his hand on top of their heads. Mina didn't know why, but she could feel as if some of his confidence was flowing through her. Naruto pointed at the clock. Now, our enemy has revealed himself. We know what he plans to do, we know where the pros are. After all, now we can focus on a single goal. Mina, go get everyone in class 1A. If he thinks there isn't anyone left to stop him since he has the pros. Let's show him what students can do. Naruto grinned wide and proud. With the final boss in front of them, they had a goal and a target finally. They weren't just searching around for clues anymore, and they had a time limit for when they would lose. Everything had fallen into place. Mina looked at him with wide eyes. You have a plan. You think we can win? May asked over Mina, 
and Naruto slammed his hand on the table. The two of them both jumped in shock, the fear they had been feeling was gone. They could only look in his blue eyes, and see nothing but confidence. May, I need you to track where that fortress is going to start, what part of Japan he's going to start his cleansing, right now, I'm sure the Air Force and Navy are going to try their best to fight, and the pro heroes that weren't captured will be helping them. I have no doubt in my mind they won't be able to do anything. You want to go to I Island right May, then you better hurry. Naruto pointed at her. Her eyes widened in shock, before she nodded and opened up her computer. She plugged some wires into a coin, and she started to look over the GPS coordinates that were constantly changing. She could track the fortress, it was possible, meaning that Naruto might have a plan. The fortress will reach land at this spot. I'll send the coordinates to your phone. May typed away as fast as she could. Naruto heard his phone go off, showing she sent them to him. She worked as fast as she could, and slowly a smile worked its way back on her face. You're not going to use the coins. May asked with a confused look when she saw Naruto preparing to head out. He grabbed a single coin from her, the original coin. Mina started to text all of the people from their class that she had the numbers for. Naruto tossed her his phone as well once he had the location memorized, and looked it up on his phone. She and Naruto had different numbers saved into their phones. Naruto transformed into his two-tail form and leaned down so that Mina could get on his back and ride him. The beach, three hours later. Are you sure anyone is going to come? Mina stood with Naruto as the two of them looked at the fortress in the distance, and it was a distance away from them now. They were watching as jet fighters tried to fight against it, only to be shot down out of the sky. Naruto saluted the fallen men in the sky, since their sacrifice was a noble one. Trying to defend the lives on not only their own nation, but also the world. Sadly, this wasn't going to happen without a loss of life this time, and Naruto wanted to make sure these brave men were honored for their sacrifice, honored by victory. Of course they are. Naruto spoke. The first arrived in the form of a limo, and Momo opened the door and slammed it shut as she ran towards them. She was in her hero costume, like asked, just like Mina and Naruto were. If they were going to play the part of the pros, then they needed to look the part. Naruto grinned when he saw one of the most important parts of the plan show up right on time. Mina smiled wide when she saw not only Momo show up, but she saw Tenya running down the street towards them as well, jumping off the railing and landing in the sand nearby them. I came as fast as I could. Are we really going to fight against that? Momo asked as she ran up after Tenya. She had originally just planned on spending her last moments with her family, but she had gotten a text from Naruto's phone saying that there was a chance that they could do something about this. She wasn't sure about it, so she had taken the family limo without permission, and decided that she would trust Naruto. Tenya looked at the giant fortress as it came closer. It's massive. Can we really take it down? He asked curiously, and Naruto looked at Momo, ignoring him for the moment. Yes, and Momo, I need you to make a boat that can fit about five people, make it as lightweight as you can. Naruto told her his orders for her. Her creation ability was key for them not needing the coins to get onto the fortress. Tenya, you're important for this plan, so you should go and fuel up. Naruto told Tenya, who actually came prepared, and showed that he brought several cans of orange juice with him. On it. He started to drink it. She uses a limo, think on that later. Mina thought with a shiver, but her eyes almost sparkled when she saw more and more of their classmates coming towards them, in whatever mode of transportation they had to them. She saw Kyoka coming with Denki, running with Siro right behind them. Momo opened the front of her leotard, and it took a lot visibly out of her, but a small boat shot out of her body and onto the sandy beach. Good. Momo asked with a look that wanted to know why she was doing that. Hey, got the text, we really doing this. Denki shouted to Mina, who he had gotten the text from. Kyoka ran up to Naruto, before she looked at the boat, and then back to Naruto, before at the fortress. That's not getting us to that. She pointed out plainly, seeing as this small boat, wasn't going to fit 20 of them, and the boat wasn't going to fly. You got a better plan in your head. Kyoka had to ask him. Naruto just grinned wider. It'll work. 
Not long after they arrived, while Momo was eating snacks from a nearby vending machine, Izuku arrived with Ochako and Yuga. The three of them came from different directions, but they had gotten there with a pretty good time. Izuka ran up to Naruto the quickest, and looked up towards him, with a downright shocked look on his face for the most part. 100%, really? Izuku asked that question alone, because Naruto had sent him a very different text after everyone else had been texted to meet up at this beach. Izuka looked around, and saw it was the very same beach that he had used for his one-for-all training. I brought what you asked. Izuka said as he took out a small rag and handed it over to Naruto, which Naruto pocketed. Good. Where are all the others? Ochako asked, since so far, a little less than half of their class had shown up. She asked Mina, who had sent her the text to start with. She had come as fast as she could, because if there was a chance she could save her parents, she would gladly take it. You would have to be completely selfish to not answer the text this time. Even Bakugo came running in angry minutes later. Ochako, Bakugo. Once Todoroki gets here, I need the two of you and Tenya to come talk with me. Screw you. Bakugo, if you don't want me to kick your damn ass before you die, then you're going to do it. Naruto threatened Bakugo flat out when he got that response. Unable to really answer that, Bakugo just nodded with an angrier face. Slowly but surely, everyone else in the class other than Tsuyu, started to arrive and gather in behind Naruto at the beach. Momo finished what she was eating, and restored her power, while Tenya finished filling up his stomach with juice, promising that he would have enough fuel to do whatever it was he needed to do. Naruto turned around and faced all of them. So many of them seemed scared of what was happening, and that was normal. Only a few days previously, they had come face to face with real villains for the first time, but this was something on a different level. Some were confident like Naruto, and all were confused at what they could possibly do for this. Naruto didn't grin at them, instead he gave them his confident smile. Tenya, Momo, Kyoka, and Tokoyama. I need the four of you to get into the boat. I'm not going to give you all a speech to tell you we're going to make it. I'm just going to say, if we fail then the world ends. If we want to win, then put your faith. Naruto spoke and pointed to the boat. The four students that he pointed out actually followed his instructions and got into the boat. Tenya saw that there was holes in the back of it that looked like his thrusters, so he sat there and put them through the holes. He could guess that was where they were going to go. Ochako stood next to Naruto. You needed me? She asked, and Naruto pointed at the boat. You're going to get in the boat with me too, you're vital to the success of this as well. I need you to make the boat, and everyone in it other than you, Weightless, think you can do that? Naruto asked the girl. She blinked in surprise at the request, before she nodded her head with a smile. She could do that. What about the rest of us? Siro asked with a grin. Anyone who isn't going up there, is going to be defending the city down here. If those of us going up there fail, it's up to all of you to try your hardest to protect the people of the city. Naruto's words hit hard for those in the boat. Naruto grinned again moments later, before he turned around and pointed at the fortress in the sky. We're not going to fail though. Come on everyone, let's do it. Dash five minutes later. Play, you say run. Everyone ready? Come on, it's time to go above and beyond. Bakugo, hit me with your most powerful explosion. Naruto stood at the back of the boat, holding onto it with his bare hands, and the boat only on the ground because of Okako's weight. Bakugo grinned and a small explosion came out of his hands as he prepared himself for something that was going to feel extremely good. Everyone prepared for the shockwave that would come. Todoroki got ready, and the right half of his body started to freeze, lowering his stance. He created the largest, most powerful ice wall that he could, a ramp that was pointed right at the flying fortress. In a second, his part was done, and he looked back towards the others. Go. Boom die. Naruto took Bakugo's explosion straight to the chest, and like a rocket, the boat was pushed forward right up the ice wall. Naruto powered down from his two-tail form with moderate burns on his chest, nothing serious. Everyone on the boat had been pushed back by the speed they were going, and suddenly Ochako looked extremely dizzy. 
She held herself towards, and Dark Shadow came out of Tokoyama and started to steer the boat as it approached the end of the ice wall, taking careful aim towards the fortress in the sky. Quickly, they had less than a second, they approached the end of the ice wall and soared through the sky. I've got it. Ida, now. Momo shouted as she used her quirk to create more orange juice canes for him. Activating his quirk, and using its fullest power, flames shot out of the engines on his calves. Any speed they might have lost in the air was regained instantly, and they started to fly through the sky in their boat. Dark Shadow used his wind-like arms to guide the boat in the air. Kyoko pointed her ear jacks towards the fortress, and acted as a sonar for any enemy attacks incoming. Attacks came. Missiles. Momo, Brains, and Brawn Time. Naruto called out to her, and she created several spears from her arms. As fast as she was creating them, Naruto grabbed them from the air and threw them towards the incoming missiles. Hitting them dead on, they exploded in the air, and their boat sailed right through the flames, with Dark Shadow shouting a whimper as he protected them from the fires and continued to steer them. Tenya started to sweat at the force it was taking for him to keep up his max speeds, shooting the boat forward, even if the boat only weighed as much as Ochako did thanks to her being the only one with any weight. If it weren't for that fact, his engines would have already stalled. Naruto reached into his pocket, before he placed something in his mouth, and gave it a quick swallow. Frowning to himself, and hating what he had just done, Naruto looked towards the fortress with determined eyes. I'm about the stall. Tenya called out as his engines started to sputter. Ochako, Momo, do it. Naruto shouted out to the two girls. Dark shadow wrapped around everyone in the boat as Naruto transformed into his one-tail form and wrapped his arms around everyone. Momo created a bomb, while Ochako touched her cheeks with her hands. Suddenly, she too was weightless. Tenya only saw darkness as Dark Shadow surrounded all of them. The bomb that Momo created landed in the boat underneath them as Naruto gave one last push forward. The boat exploded, and the five of them were sent flying even faster towards the fortress. Inside the fortress. Master. Sensors indicate the object approaching us has exploded. Fitting. The man spoke simply as he looked at the footage of the explosion with a small smirk on his face. The children in that boat weren't even worth his attention, and now they were dead. It was a fitting end for those solo on the hero totem pole, that they weren't even worth him researching them or their quirks. Good riddance. With the rescue squad. Blay -a 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 -a. Ochako threw up over the side of the fortress, as they stood on the bottom layer of it all, right next to an open window. She had pushed herself too far with her quirk, and now she was going to have to deal with the side effects. Tokoyama looked at the burnt blue blanket that was over their bodies, which had surrounded Dark Shadow just before the explosion. It had been a last second camouflage, to make them look like the ocean underneath them, so if they were being recorded, Nobody would see them flying through the air if they only watched the footage for a second. All of them stood up and looked towards the inside of the fortress with determined looks. Other than Ochako. She was still throwing up. Chapter 33, Heroes Menagerie Part 4 Crunch Thank God these are robots, or that would be downright terrifying. Kyoka commented when she saw Naruto bite the head off of the robot, and then proceed to spit it out. She herself unplugged her earphone jacks into the backs of the robots' heads when she fought them, and blasted a super-amplified heartbeat through them. It destroyed them pretty quickly as easily, but she was a little surprised at the ways her comrades were fighting, or not actually. Ochako just made the robots float in the air, and pushed them out of the window. Tenya fought using almost only kicks, Tokoyama was maining Dark Shadow, and Momo wasn't fighting, since Naruto told her to save her quirk up. Also, how did these robots capture any heroes? Kyoka asked with some surprise as they took down the horde of robots that had been in the room, without so much as a real problem. These robots seemed to not even know how to fight them, most of the robots looked at them, and were unable to identify who they were. Some of them would pull out a weird weapon from their briefcase, but the weapons were usually useless against them. One of them pulled out a weapon that dropped the air pressure, and another used a weapon that made the air around them cold. It was like these robots didn't know how to fight people with their quirks, and were just trying to use weird methods that wouldn't work against them. Don't throw up when you're on my shoulders. 
Naruto threatened Ochako as the girl pushed more robots out of the window. Heavily overusing her quirk caused her to puke, but thankfully, or regretfully, her stomach was now fully empty. She had literally nothing in it anymore to throw up, but the horrible feeling of having to throw up was making it too hard for her to walk and fight. Meaning, somebody was carrying her, so she was sitting on Naruto's shoulders until she had the strength to stand and run on her own again. Tsuya was in this room recently. I can smell several heroes coming through here, but they are in those pods. Ochako! Do it! Naruto walked over to several hero pods, and the girl placed her hands on each one they passed by. They started to float. I'm on it. Momo said as she rushed over to the floating pods, and she formed several parachutes out of her body, and attached them to the pods themselves. Forming large rocks out of her body, she tried them to the pods as well. Pushing the hero pods out of the window, she leaned over the edge of the window and watched the pods falling out of the sky at a much slower rate than they would have if they had all of their weight. There. Momo pressed a button she had attached to her belt, and the parachutes opened up, falling safely now down towards the beach, the wind blowing them right back onto land. The combination of Momo and Ochako was the reason why Naruto wanted the two girls to come into the air with them because they would be able to much more smoothly rescue people in this sky fortress than any other combination in the class. Kyoka plugged her jacks into the wall. Anything. Tenya questioned her, and she glanced at him. This room is silent, other than the sounds of machinery in the walls. Kyoka described it the best she could. The reason why she was brought along, not only her moderately good fighting potential, but her ability to act as a radar and a scout. Her small body and radar-like powers made her great for the boat they used to fly, and her quirk would allow her to go off on her own and still be somewhat comfortable fighting. Tenya nodded and activated his quirk, with Kyoka jumping onto his back, rushing out of sight down the nearest hallway, the two of them quickly turning a corner and vanishing from sight. With Tenya's speed and Kyoka's quirk, they would be able to locate as many heroes as possible, and Ochako and Momo would be able to provide the rescue support for them. I think I can stand again. Ochako slid down Naruto's back and onto her feet again. Everyone stayed as alert as they could, with Tokoyama keeping dark shadow out at all times to make sure they never had an enemy get the drop on them. Naruto had thought about all of their quirks, and had decided to pick them for this mission based on that. Tinya's engine was good with Kyoka's earphone jack, Momo's creation was great with Okako's zero gravity, and having only pure one fighter was bad, so Naruto picked a powerful fighter in the form of Tokoyama, who had a very versatile fighting quirk that could provide a range of support in other areas. If they ever got separated, then Tokoyama would be able to provide support to the others rather easily. It was the perfect team for rescuing people in an unknown place, speedy area mapping and locating, combined with fast and safe rescue, while having two fighters to cover the rescuers as they did their job. In this kind of situation, this was the team that was needed. Naruto blinked when he heard movement, and he wasn't the only one who heard the sound of something squishy against the walls. Guys. Tsuyu. Ochako asked as she looked up towards the sound of the voice. Surprised, Ochako let out a gasp and pointed at Tsuyu when she realized it was the frog girl that was crawling on the ceiling towards them. In an instant, Tokoyama averted his eyes from the half-dressed frog girl, and covered his eyes with his hands to avoid the temptation to look. Naruto raised an eyebrow when he saw her sports bra and panties, but didn't make a comment about it as he looked away from her, with much less of a reaction of urgency than Tokoyama did. Seriously, they were just underwear, it wasn't like the girl was butt naked, so he didn't see why Tokoyama was making such a big deal out of it. Your clothes. Momo shouted as she ran over towards the girl. I had to take them off to escape. Tsuyu spoke like it was normal, though with red cheeks. Naruto reached into his pocket, and he took out the skirt that he had been using to track Tsuyu. Tossing it on the girl's head, she looked down at it when she grabbed it. This is mine. I went to your house to get something with your smell on it, to try and track you. I kept it, because I didn't know what condition I would find you in, here, take this to cover up. Naruto draped his cape around her shoulders. She used it as cover to slid her skirt up her legs and zip it, before she gave him back his cape. Momo, don't even think about using your quirk for this. Save your quirk as much as possible, you're okay in just a skirt. 
Naruto asked the smallest girl in the class, and she nodded her head. I mean, she's wearing a sports bra, people go jogging in those all the time. Even Ochako nodded her head at that. It was a widely accepted practice for a girl to not wear a shirt, if she was at least wearing a sports bra. Tsuya had red cheeks, and was no doubt not one of the girls that did that, but she was decent at the moment. So, we have Tsuyu, we just going to save the heroes and leave. Ochako asked as she pointed to said girl. They got their classmate, they should get the heroes, and wake them up to let them take care of everything now. Right, now we can let the pros dash. They're being controlled by that man's quirk, somehow, he can put people under a mind control spell. I don't know how he does it, but since he used it on me, he hasn't used it on me since, but it seems to pros haven't been able to break out of it like me. Tsuyu informed them of the state that the pro heroes were in. She didn't know how the man was keeping them all in a state of mind control, and she didn't even know how she was able to break free of his control. She had guesses, but none of them had any real supporting evidence behind them. Ochako fell silent. Anything else? Tokoyama spoke up, asking the girl. She nodded. There are these 15 weird machines. Five of them are guarded by pro heroes, and in the middle of the machines are small, broken crystal fragments. I don't know what they do, but they seem important. If we break the machines, it could destroy the base. What are you doing? Tsuyu asked when she saw Naruto go behind her, and look at the back of her head in his fox form. He used his hands and stared to feel around at the back of her head for something, looking around for anything that might prove her as a robot, or a fake. Nothing to prove she was fake. I'm pretty sure robots don't stick to ceilings. Ochako pointed out, before Naruto pulled a small tick out of her head. It was a black tick, with a small red antenna on it, and the antenna was flashing red. It was clearly not a real tick, but Naruto took his phone out and snapped a picture of it. Opening the doors to the next room, Naruto looked and saw a hero pod. Glancing inside of it, Naruto saw that there was a tick just like it on the back of the pro hero's head as well. Holy crap, that's gross. Ochako shouted out, and Naruto gave it to Momo. She was smart and stuff. Transmitter of some kind. If the guy uses a hypnosis-like quirk, this must be something to help him use his quirk. Momo started to think about it, and everyone entered the next room. Momo started to look at the heroes who were all in their pods, and while she continued to make parachutes for all of them, she looked into the pods. She could see the ticks are all in the same spot on the heroes. It looks like the ticks are all positioned right against the cortex and cerebellum. Did he put this on you when he first took control of you? Momo asked Tsuyu, who shook her head. She didn't even know the man had placed one of those on her, and if it was still on her, then why was she not under the man's control to this moment? It made no sense for her to not be under control. How did you break out? Tokoyama questioned her. I don't know. You didn't break out, my guys as these ticks are transmitters. The man must use his quirk to send waves into the back of the head, that lets him control people's bodies, not their minds. Since Tsuya's brain is still developing, after a while, she became immune to his control, for the pro heroes, they are adults. Their brains have finished developing, and they can't become immune, since he has to target the back of the head, he needs these ticks to transmit his wavelength. Momo theorized the best that she could under the stressful situation they were in. In her studies, she had read a bunch about the human brain. She knew which parts of the brain controlled what. That is, provided that you could still think for yourself. Momo admitted the biggest flaw in her theory. If Tsuya lost control of her mind, then her theory was done. I could still think for myself, but my body moved on its own. Tsuyu admitted, and Naruto looked around. Momo, make us all headbands. Line the inside of them with something that blocks out waves. Naruto told her, even if they could become immune, it would be best if they could avoid being controlled to begin with. Very quickly, Momo made them six headbands, Tsuya was immune, and didn't need one, and gave them out. When Tenya and Kyoka got back from their mapping, they would be given some as well. Tokoyama, you and Tsuya should go and destroy the machines she saw. When Tenya and Kyoka get back, Momo and Ochako, you two go with them and free all of the heroes. 
Naruto gave them the plan, what they were going to do. He's taken the spot of leader very well. He's not scary like I thought. Tsuya looked at Naruto with a twinkle of admiration. She had always thought he was kind of scary, an intense sort of guy, but she could see the hero in him. He was putting everyone with somebody that would be able to help them the most. He was clearly trusting all of them to be able to do their part. What are you going to do? Tsuyu asked him out of concern. Naruto lifted his arm up, still in a sling, and he slammed it into the wall. He broke the cast right off of his arm, and grinned to himself when he didn't feel any pain. I had Izuka get me some super heavy painkillers, so I'm going to play distraction. I can sense my Tama here somewhere. He's using my Tama to power his cannon, if I can get to that, then he can't please the world. Naruto stated, taking on the most dangerous task for himself. What he was doing was going to attract the most danger, and put him at the most risk. He would no doubt have to fight actual pro heroes, or even maybe fight against the supervillain himself. Kyoka's earphone jack should be helpful. She might be able to break the control on pro heroes for a moment, if you come across any pros out of these pods, hit them really hard in the back of the head. Naruto pointed to the back of his own head for imagery. If they could destroy the transmitters, then they would be able to steal control of the heroes away from the villain, and it would make all of their lives that much easier. Tenya and Kyoka came back at that moment. Are you okay? Ochako shouted out in concern when she saw Kyoka's arm. She had blood dripping down her hand, which was hanging limply at her side. She also had a stained hole in the arm of her jacket. I apologize, it was my fault. As we were scouting, I didn't see a robot with a gun, and Jiro-san protect Dash. Shut up already, you told me sorry way too many times. Yeah, it hurts, but I'll be fine. It really hurts actually, but I'll be fine. Thankfully, we were able to locate where all of the pros are, we also saw about 13 or 15 weird machines around the place. Kyoka explained as she covered up her bleeding arm with her hand. She had been shot by an actual god, right in the forearm. Her life wasn't in any danger at the moment, and it wouldn't be if she kept the bleeding slow. Tsuyu. Kyoko looked at the girl, and she smiled in relief. Good, she was safe. Ah. I'm sorry, I won't look at you if it makes you uncomfortable. Small change of plans. Tenya, carry Momo, and Ochako and free all of the hero pods. Kyoka, go with Tsuyu and Tokoyama to those machines you saw, and break them. If you see any pro heroes, hit them in the back of the head as hard as you can without killing them. Naruto mentioned as he showed them just the spot to hit it. They didn't need all of the details, but as long as they knew what they would have to do, that would be fine. Texas Dash. Get going. Naruto shouted as he shoved all of his classmates to the ground. Naruto powered up and pulled his fist back on his good arm. Naruto saw All Might rushing towards them with a pulled back fist. Smash. Naruto punched his uncle's wrist and redirected the attack towards the side of the room, with the shockwave easily blasting a hole right through it to the outside. Knowing that they couldn't hope to fight All Might, the other students retreated and left this task to Naruto. Naruto looked at his uncle, and he grinned to himself when he had to deflect another punch. Naruto used his tails and smashed them into his uncle's left side, and blood spewed out from his mouth. Looking at All Might in the eyes, Naruto grinned. You sent the worst possible opponent to try and stop me villain. I know every weakness this man has, and I know exactly how to counter his fighting style. Looks like you're getting pretty scared if you're going to send the big guns after us. Naruto stated with a dark grin, knowing he had the bad guy scared was a great feeling. It meant that they truly did have a hope of succeeding now. Nine more figured started to walk into the room, with one of them transforming into a large dragon the second she got into the room all of their quirks activating in preparation for a fight that was to come. Nobody can beat the top 10 dash. Oh shut up with your monologue, I'm not here to hear you go on and on about how you're unstoppable, and blah blah blah. I don't care, the world is in danger, and I'm going to save it. Anyway, I'm not fighting the top 10. I'm fighting you, and there is no way that you can control the top 10 and have them fight at their full strength at the same time. Let's see what you got. Naruto raised his fists up as he got ready for a fight. 
If this guy was controlling their movements, not their minds, then it stood to reason that the man wouldn't be able to make them fight at their full skill level. That took a conscious thought to do, and these people were smart and knew how to use their unique quirks to their ultimate potential. This man wouldn't be able to bring out that potential. He was just bringing out an imitation. With the man. Damn him, damn him, damn him, damn him. That is the boy, if I kill him, then the flames in his Hoshi no Tama will die out. Damn it. He's here, ruining my plans. He's freeing my collection, and he didn't even let me finish my monologue. The man shouted as he slammed his fists into his throne. He was controlling each and every one of the top ten, and even now he was making them all fight Naruto. Yet, somehow Naruto was able to hold his own against them, and had even powered down so that he was fighting without his quirk. He was being mocked. This child was mocking him, telling him that he couldn't make the top ten fight at their full strength. How dare this boy make fun of him like this, and insult the top ten while he was at it. With Naruto. That's six down dash, Naruto said as he dodged a punch and kicked one of the top ten in the back of the head, shattering the tick. Out of the control of the villain, the top hero collapsed to the ground, knocked out. If he was facing the actual top ten, and they were in control of their own bodies, then the fight would be going very differently. As it stood though, right now he was fighting mere imitations of what they should be. Hollow shells of them, controlled by a crazed villain. That said, with his uncle's speed and strength, and Ryuko in her dragon form, and Endeavor's flames, it would still be hard to take them down, simply because shattering the ticks on their heads would be a feat to do. Then there was Mirko, one of the fastest of the top ten, and perhaps the third physically strongest after Ryukyu and All Might, and she was just hard to hit enough as it was. Robots with guns also started to come into the room and surround Naruto. They were careful to not shoot the pro heroes as they fired, and Naruto had to transform again to gain strong enough muscles to ignore the bullets for the most part. Naruto was kicked right in the stomach by both of Mirko's powerful legs when he was busy dodging All Might's punch, and Endeavor's flames. Naruto hit the wall, and landed on his back on the ground, coughing up blood. He felt the heat of strong flames lick his skin as Endeavor put his foot on Naruto's chest, and Naruto looked up at him. He summoned forth flames, and prepared to burn Naruto to a near-death state. This is what you get for mock dash. I've always wanted to do this dash, Naruto stated as he pulled his fist back, and he slammed it as hard as he could right between Endeavor's legs. Nailing him with a powerful punch, right to that nads. Naruto's punch was strong enough to lift the man off of his feet, into the air, and Naruto used his tails to wrap around Endeavor's legs, before slamming him into the ground. Shattering the tick on the head of his head. And it makes me dash. With Todoroki. How are you smiling right now? Everyone in class 1A was extremely busy, catching all of the hero pods that were falling out of the sky, and placing them down safely on the beach. Todoroki didn't know why he was smiling, but something very enjoyable just happened. With Naruto. Seriously, I enjoyed that way too much. Fuck you Endeavor, come on. It's still three on one. Let's see how your top ten wannabes can hold up against me. Naruto stated, and he noticed that the longer he fought, the better the villain was getting at controlling the heroes. Not to mention since he was controlling less heroes, it was easier for him to maintain a firm control over these heroes. Their movements are getting sharper, this is getting a little bad, also. Mirko broke my ribs for sure, thankfully, I feel very little pain right now. Naruto really was going to thank Izuka for bringing him that pain medicine. It was helping him keep his mind free of pain, which was very good for him right now. Boom. All Might tried to rush out of the room when an explosion was heard, and Naruto ran in front of him and kicked him across the face, sending him flying into the wall as well. You're not stopping my friends. Just like I can't leave this room, I'm not letting any of you leave the room. Naruto transformed to his three tail form and rushed at Ryuko tackling her against the wall. Mirko rushed him and slammed her legs into him, and he grabbed her with his hand. Naruto snapped his teeth around Ryuko's neck, and the two of them began to grapple. Come on, hero basics, grappling the villain. Naruto repeated with her flesh between his teeth, her scales protecting her from major damage. Naruto slammed the back of her head into the wall, and he did it over and over until she stopped trying to grapple him. 
He jumped and slammed her head into the ceiling when All Might rushed him, and he barely avoided getting a powerful punch, just as Ryuko transformed back into her human form, knocked out cold with the tick broken. Naruto slammed Mirko into the ground head first, she was super tough, and he shattered the tick on her head. Naruto transformed to a smaller size, and placed the women down gently, before he turned to look at his uncle. I'll just swarm you with every hero I have then. More heroes started to get released from their hero pods, and Naruto saw dozens of heroes with their quirks active coming at him. Naruto raised his fists up, and prepared for the fight of his life against dozens of quirks. With Tsuyu. Boom. Got the crystal. Tsuyu said as she picked up the crystal, after Kyoka and Tokoyama destroyed the machine that it was inside of. She didn't know why she was picking it up, but if the villain was using them for something, then it clearly wasn't anything good. The hero pod in the room opened up, and they were soon face to face with MT. Lady as the woman started to run towards them. Tsuyu jumped up high into the air, and as MT. Lady used her quirk, Tsuyu landed on her head. Her tongue stretched out, and she grabbed Kyoka and brought the girl up to their level. Kyoka's earphone jacks stretched out and entered MT. Lady's ears, before blood came out of them when she took the heartbeat amp at point black range. Tokoyama used this as his chance to break the tick on the back of her head, by stretching dark shadow up and shattering it. Thank god the guy controlling them seems to be distracted by something. Ochako, Momo. Ida. Kyoka asked when she and Tsuyu landed on the ground, seeing Tenya with the other girls running into the room. They had a few crystals in their hands. The hero pods opened, and the heroes are going to where Naruto is. We're going to join you in this. In the basement. Cough cough. An extremely elderly man, laying in a machine with tubes running in and out of his body, coughed up blood. Most of his body was covered up by machines, including the top half of his head. His body was sickly and pale, and he had almost no muscle. He was practically, or literally, skin and bones. The machines connected to him had their tubes running up into the walls around him, 15 tubes connected to the walls, and several of them were no longer functioning. With the man. Those brats, you, they're ruining it all. The man spoke as he felt an amazing amount of pain run through his mind. This isn't how this is supposed to go, they're just children. I can't be defeated by mere children. The man shouted as he took off his cloak and revealed his face. He had long, slicked back black hair, and sharp yellow eyes with slit pupils. He wore a black suit like his minion robots, but his had golden lining to it. Several parts of his body were clearly mechanical, including his hands and his neck. He stormed off of his throne, and prepared to go deal with it himself if he had to. He was going to have to put an end to all of these children with this body. He stopped and growled in anger when he sat back down on his throne, hating what he had to do, but if he left his throne then it would become far too hard to control so many heroes at the same time. The back of his neck reconnected with his throne, and he frowned when he realized that the majority of the heroes had been defeated. With Naruto. Ha, 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 fuck this is hard. Naruto stood on the body of the latest defeated hero, with the only hero still fighting him being All Might himself. Naruto's body was bloody and bruised, with his broken arm snapped in the wrong direction once more. Even on pain medication, Naruto was in a metric ton of pain. Naruto took a coin out of his pocket, and he palmed it in his hand. Naruto ran at All Might, and jumped over a punch, before he threw the coin into the doorway. Opening up a portal, right into the UA. Workshop. All of the heroes in the room were blasted into the portal one after another, thanks to the shockwave from All Might's punch. Naruto slammed his hands into the back of All Might's head as his eyes widened upon seeing all of the heroes pushing through the portal. All Might passed out when the tick on his head was crushed, and Naruto grabbed him, before he threw him into the portal by the cape as well. No doubt, Mei was super pissed off right now, considering Naruto just dumped dozens and dozens of pro heroes right into the workshop. Oh well. The heroes were off of the fortress, which was good enough. Naruto was going to have to trust his friends were saving the other heroes on the fortress, meaning this was his chance to go and retrieve his Hoshi no Tama. Naruto took a shaky step, and looked down at his legs. Both of them were broken. Recovery Girl was going to love healing him again, when she learned that he had destroyed his body. 
Boom. Child, you're become a though dash. Save the monologue, I don't want to hear it. Seriously, talk, 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 is that all you villains do when you're pushed into a corner? Oh great, another robot, at least this one looks different, so what should I call this robot? Minion 1. Minion 2. Naruto asked as he raised his fists up. A throne started to descend from the ceiling, and a man sitting on it looked down at Naruto with disdain. Clearly, he hated Naruto at this point, for taking most of his collection from him. That much was obvious, and the man's throne landed in the room with a loud thud. The man stood out of his throne. I'm not going to kill you, but you're going to dash. Monologue. Naruto grinned when the man looked furious at being interrupted again. He wasn't going to let this villain enjoy this, not even a little. You're in no position to smile brat. I captured all of the best pro heroes. What are you? A child. I can crush you. Yeah, and how many years of planning did it take to capture these pros? Yeah, I'm a kid, but I'm a kid you never planned on. You don't know how I work, you don't know how I fight, you don't have a plan on capturing or fighting me. Just because I'm a student, I bet you didn't bother researching any of my classmates either. Well, your arrogance is going to cost you, my friends are destroying your machines as we speak. Naruto spoke as transformed. Naruto tapped the side of his head as well, the man seemed angrier for some reason. Also, can't control me, can you, should I turn around? Naruto turned around and showed the back of his head to the man. Nothing. How? The man asked, and Naruto grinned. My classmates are pretty damn smart, we figured out your quirk. Now, what's the name of the villain I'm going to beat up? Naruto asked again as he returned to a fighting position. This robot is more than likely a lot stronger than the rest of them. I better be careful. I'm too injured to take this lightly. Naruto thought as he observed the man in front of him. Just because he was making himself sound cocky, didn't mean he was going to underestimate this man for even a second. Orochimaru Chapter 34, Heroes Menagerie Part 5 Releasing yet another pro hero to fall out of the fortress, with a parachute on, as Momo worked with the others to free the five pro heroes that were guarding five of the fifteen strange machines that were surrounding the outside edges of the fortress. They had cleared fourteen rooms of machines at this point, and had stolen fourteen of the crystals in the machines, while also breaking the machines just for good measure. At the same time, they had actually come across only four of the five pro heroes that were being used to guard the chambers. So, is anyone else surprised they were picked to storm the fortress? Kyoka asked as she ran behind everyone as they tried to make their way to the last room they would have to go towards. She, personally, had no expected to be picked for this part of the mission, period. She had been expecting to be told to stay behind, and catch the pro heroes that were falling out of the sky. Instead, she was right on the front lines, kind of, Naruto was still doing the hardest part himself. Even then, she had a bullet wound for her trouble so she had her own hero scar from this event. Hopefully, this won't scar. Kyoka hoped as she looked down at her wounded arm. She wanted to be a hero, and if pain came with it, she would accept it. Yet, she was still a woman, and she didn't want to have any scars if she could help it. If it scarred, she would be just fine, and would get a tattoo or something to cover the scar with, more than likely she just learned to deal with it. She expected Momo for sure since Naruto and Momo's teamwork and their skills together were phenomenal, to the point that they had been banned from working together in class just to make it fair for other students. That girl was to be expected, and Tokoyama was on the higher end of the combat scale in their class. His dark shadow was perhaps one of the more powerful and unique quirks in class, though not as powerful as Naruto's own Todoroki's quirks. I thought Kirishima or Deku would be picked. Ochako looked out, and saw the moon up high in the sky. Doesn't Dark Shadow get stronger in the dark? Ochako asked Tokoyama, since his quirk was shadow related. It would make sense for it to get stronger in the dark, and weaker in the light. Of course, the rooms they were in were brightly lit, so it wasn't like they were just in the dark. It just so happened to be night time, and it would be morning rather soon. They had been working for what felt like hours, trying to take down all of the machines they could get. Yet, 
The machines were far away from each other, and the ones guarded by heroes were a lot tougher, harder to destroy in general. Not to mention every time they saw a hero pod, they took the time to free the hero inside. That just means Naruto selected each of us as the best for the job. Tenya stated with a nod. That was Naruto saying he acknowledged their skills and abilities, and not only were they the best for the job, but they could be trusted to do it. It also means Bakugo is going to hate all of us, since he wasn't picked. Ochako pointed out as well. The rest of the class would be fine not getting picked for this, but Bakugo would be absolutely pissed off that he wasn't picked for his battle skills. Though, maybe explosions on a flying fortress aren't smart. It would suck if he hit whatever it was keeping this place flying, and we all went crashing down. Ochako realized with a shiver at how quickly everything could have turned to crap if Bakugo was up here, with all of them. A lot of people could die, yet, the world might be saved, but she was pretty sure everyone on the fortress would be dead if it crashed. Tokoyama was silent, but he made Dark Shadow go in front of everyone as the door slammed in their faces. Not only did the door slam in front of the last room they needed to go to, but extra doors appeared over this room. Massive, iron doors that were thick enough that even all of them together might not be enough to break it down. He had gotten a quick glance into the room, and inside was a crystal that was bigger than the others they had taken. I'll blast it open. Momo was about to form a cannon. No, Naruto said save your quirk. You've about reached your limit, right? Tsuyo looked at the girl, and she had visibly lost some weight. Her body was thinner than it had been when she first arrived on the fortress. Anymore, and her ribs would be visible, and forming a cannon with explosive power would have taken a lot out of her. It would take far too much, all things considered. Momo formed the cannon, and she started to pant as she blasted a home through the iron doors with one booming blast. She was breathing heavily, and like Tsuya said, her body was getting visibly thin. Her leotard was looser than before, and her belt was hanging further down her legs. She lost a little stamina too, and dropped to her knees and took deep breaths. I'm fine, if I'm not ready to put my body on the line, then I'm not cut out for this line of work. Naruto's facing far more danger than any of us, to allow us to get this done, and the world is counting on us now, we have too many people depending on us for me to think about myself. Momo spoke as she stood back up. She actually got some smiles, Tenya rubbing the tears from his eyes and gesturing to her. Well spoken, like a hero. Suddenly, there was a loud gunshot, as Momo was shot in the shoulder, and two more as she was got in her thighs. She shouted in pain as she was knocked off of her feet, and dark shadow covered all of them. Momo landed her back, cradling her bullet wounds with a pained expression on her face. Dark shadow. Tokoyama shouted as he sent his dark shadow into the hole in the wall, to make it fight against the pro hero and teacher, Snipe. Azui. Tokoyama shouted and looked back at Momo. Tsuya rushed to her side, so did Kyoka and Ochako, while Tenya jumped through the hole in the wall and started to try and fight Snipe as well. It was a lot harder than fighting any of the other pro heroes instantly, as Snipe was able to use his gun against them. He even had robots supplying him with more ammo and more guns, so Tenya was forced to run around the room and use anything for cover that he could. Snipe dropped a smoke grenade on the ground, and filled the room with smoke, making it even harder for Tenya to try and find the right cover. It's like the villain controlling Snipe is a lot more focused. Naruto must have defeated other heroes. Tenya could see how this could happen. The more heroes this villain was controlling, the harder it was to make all those heroes fight with any level of skill. The more heroes controlled, the more they needed to rely on using numbers. The opposite being true as well, the less heroes being controlled, the stronger the control, and the more skillful the fighters being controlled were. Tenya rushed towards the glass protecting the machine, and for his trouble, he was actually shot in the side. The bullet not piercing anything vital thankfully, and going through cleanly. Still, Tenya's foot rammed into the glass, and put a crack in it. This was the part where Kyoko would have used her earphone jack to shatter the glass. Tinya's engines were out of juice. Thankfully, Dark Shadow covered for him, rushing in front of him to block bullets, and grab him to pull him behind cover. In the smoke-filled room, Dark Shadow grew bigger and more powerful, and more vicious. Rushing towards Snipe when Tenya was behind cover, 
he used a quick claw swipe, before he tried to tackle the man. It didn't go well for the quirk though, Snipe dropped a flash grenade in front of himself. Ah. Uh. Sorry, Dark Shadow is weakened by super bright light, how is she doing? Tenya, can you manage alone for a minute? Tokoyama shouted into the room, taking cover behind the mostly intact doors. How do they fight with these injuries? Tenya didn't say anything to give himself away. He looked at his bleeding side, and undid his armor, tightening his shirt around the area. He looked to his side, and saw a gun pointed at his face. Click. It was empty, and as Snipe was refilling his ammo, Tenya used his chance to escape. He rushed to the doors and jumped through the hole, and Dark Shadow blocked the hole once more. Is Yeora Rozu okay? Tenya asked as he limped towards them. He looked at the girl, cradling her wounded body, but she forced herself to try and sit up when that question was asked. She created bandages, and gave them to Kyoka, to tie around her wounded parts. She grunted and yelped when she had her wounds covered up, but she nodded her head and forced herself to stand up. I'm out of juice. Yeora Rosa. Can you make one more can of orange juice? Tenya asked the girl, purely for the reason of allowing him to keep fighting. She nodded her head. Kyoka frowned. No, I'll do it, call Dark Shadow back, and make me light Ochako. Kyoka extended her hand to the girl. Ochako looked concerned, but nodded her head and did it for her. Dark Shadow came back towards them, and Kyoka floated towards him. Grabbing onto her, Dark Shadow rushed into the room through the hole. Let go of me. Kyoka whispered to Dark Shadow, and the second he did, she started to float up into the air. Attention on Dark Shadow, Snipe started to shoot towards the hole to try and get at the kids behind the doors, ignoring Dark Shadow. Shatter. He couldn't ignore the glass case shattering, or the girl falling out of the air. Shooting at Kyoka, and hitting her in the same arm, inches away from her other wound, as she landed on top of him and pushed him to the ground. She stretched her earphone jacks down at him, and stabbed them next to his head. Playing the most intense heartbeat she could manage, she shattered the ground around his head, and when Snipe stopped moving, she guessed the tick with it. She heard the sounds of guns though, shifting their aim to her, and saw the small robot army preparing to open fire. Sorry, gotta use this. Kyoka rolled across the ground and grabbed Snipe's gun, and she fired it at the robots. She missed every single shot. It took more than just holding a gun to use it, it took more skill than she had expected it. Thankfully for her life, Dark Shadow rushed around and destroyed the robots with ease once she had missed, and quickly after, the smoke in the room cleared away. Dark Shadow opened up the doors with some serious effort, but soon enough all of her teammates were in the same room with her again. You did it. This is the last one. Ochako ran over and hugged Kyoka. She was so glad that the girl didn't die. I'll use the last of my strength to make parachutes. Momo spoke as she formed enough parachutes for everyone in the room. She attached one to Snipe first, and with help, threw their teacher out of the window. Watching him fall, she pressed the button to open the parachute from a distance, and smiled to herself as the teacher safely fell down towards where their fellow students were, to catch him. Let's grab the crystal, destroy the machine, and jump. Momo strapped her parachute on herself. Everyone noticed she seemed to be forgetting something. What about Naruto? How will he escape? Tsuyu asked what they were all thinking, and Momo turned and looked at her with a smile. He's Naruto, I'm sure he has a plan to escape. I have full faith in him. Momo answered rather simply. If anyone was a pro when it came to not dying from things that should kill him, it was their strongest classmate. The guy should have long been dead from the things he had suffered from, but he was still alive and well. Kyoka nodded in agreement, and plugged herself into the machine, blasting it to pieces with internal sound waves in one quick blast. Tsuya hopped up into the machine and grabbed the crystal, ripping it from its spot. In the basement. Splat. Orochimaru spewed more blood from his mouth, his elderly, weak form unable to manage any more without his connections to the flying fortress around him. Trapped in his machines, he was unable to get up and escape as red lights started to go off all in the room around him. The last of the tubes connecting to his body snapped, and the color of his skin started to drastically grow paler. With Naruto. Fuck. 
What is that robot body made of? Naruto rubbed his sore fist as he jumped back. He ducked underneath a laser, and rolled out of the way as Orochimaru tried to kick him. The robot fell to the ground on his knees for a moment, and Naruto panted, before he grinned in relief. What, robot body can't keep up with, what? Naruto stood up straight as the red lights in the room started to go off. Orochimaru's face twisted into a scowl. My life support. Those fools, they destroyed my life support, and the only thing keeping the weapon stable, this entire place could blow at any moment now. Your friends have doomed us all. Orochimaru shouted as his robot body started to fade. Unable to control it very well anymore, with his real body dying. Naruto's eyes widened for a moment, before he sighed and sat down. Well damn. If this place could blow at any minute, and in his condition, then there was no way he was escaping the explosion. Naruto took out his phone, and looked at his contacts, before he smiled to himself. Well, my friends should have escaped by now. If my life is what it takes to save the world, that seems like a fair trade. Naruto looked at his broken legs, and sighed to himself. He wasn't in a great condition at the moment, and transforming wouldn't fix his broken legs. There was no way he was going to escape in time to outrun the place blowing up for sure. Orochimaru looked shocked. Do, do you not fear death boy? Of course, this is terrifying. This is the life I signed up for, so I really can't complain, about dying at least. You being the last person I see, now that is something to complain about. Naruto leaned up against the wall and sighed to himself. Naruto felt the pain medication wearing off and the pain his body was going through right was was getting much more intense. Orochimaru barely managed to stand up, his control over his false body becoming more and more unstable. This place might have five minutes before it explodes, and my real body no longer has the Hoshi no Tama fragments acting as life support. To think, my 129 years of life ends today, even my immortality didn't last. Orochimaru fell down, unable to control his body anymore. Naruto looked at him with a frown on his face, before he sighed to himself. He hated the way that sounded. You seem to have accepted it pretty dash. Not. Don't think you've won just yet. Orochimaru shouted with a dark, insane, grin on his face. Naruto really didn't like the sound of that. On the beach. Guys. All of the pros are safe. Mina shouted as she rushed over towards their friends as they fell out of the sky. The countdown clock that was displayed everywhere had actually stopped. The world was safe once more, in comparison to being burned to ashes at least. There were still villains all around the world of course, but this big battle was gone now. That medication should be wearing off by now. I hope, where is he? Izuka ran towards everyone as well. His eyes widened a little when he did a head count, and while he counted Tsuyu, he didn't count Naruto among the people who had escaped. The fortress was flying out of the sky. The world is safe. The bad guy was beaten, and everyone is, mostly unharmed. Denki shouted out, before he saw the blood that was staining their bodies. Half of them were covered in their own blood, but not enough to warrant their lives being in immediate danger. Where is Foxy? Denki looked around for their Vulpin classmate as everyone touched down on the ground. Nobody could see him everywhere. Where is my bro? Kirishima asked as he walked up to Tokoyama, the least injured person present among the rescue party. Tokoyama slid his parachute off his shoulders, before he nodded at Kirishima. He was playing distraction, with his strength, he should escape any moment now. Tokoyama showed his confidence. Seeing as Naruto put faith in him, he would in turn put faith in Naruto to survive. Ding. Mina ignored everyone else as she looked down at her phone and she saw that she got a text from Naruto. I love you, thank you for being in my life. Mina didn't know why, but tears rolled down her cheeks moments after reading his message. Naruto isn't here yet? I'm sure he would have been done by now, but that means he is still. Ochako turned her head and looked towards the falling fortress as well. Everyone started to look that way, 19 pairs of eyes watched as the watched as the base started to come apart. Eyes started to widen. Then, it happened, the base exploded with enough force that even where they were, they could all feel the explosive power of the boom. 
the heat from the explosion, the blue flames filling the sky itself. Giant parts of the fortress fell into the ocean, the sky clearing and revealing the moon above. Some pieces even rained down on the beach around them, Bakugo even blasted a piece out of the air and into the ocean in front of them. Naruto! Naruto! Mina shouted, screamed, at the top of her lungs as she tried to run towards the ocean. She was stopped when she was grabbed by the wrist, just as a giant piece of metal nearly crushed her. There was silence in the class, even Bakugo had his head bowed in respect at their fallen comrade. Mina broke down in the sand and stated to cry then and there. His last words to her. She didn't even have the chance to respond to them before Naruto died. His last words were so heartfelt, and even over a text, she could tell they were sincere. His last thoughts before he died, they were of her. She was crying so hard, it physically hurt her body. They had been dating for nearly a full year at this point, they may not always show it, but she had strong feelings for him as well. Most of those in the class were actually crying. He died to give us a chance to save everyone, he was a true hero to the end. Ten Nya thought, clenching his eyes shut, tears in them at the last act of a real hero. Can somebody please help me? I can't move my body, and I'm in a lot of pain. Seriously dude, what does it take to kill you? Kirishima shouted as Naruto started to float in the water towards them, a shark carrying Naruto towards the land. Everyone watched as the shark dropped Naruto off at the shore, before the shark grew wings and flew away. Dude. I thought that shark was dead. Kirishima remembered that shark as the one that had tried to eat him. Yet here it was again, alive and well, carrying Naruto back to the shore on its back. What is Dash? Naruto. Mina pushed Kirishima out of the way roughly as she grabbed Naruto. I love you too. I love you so much, don't ever scare me like that again. I thought you were dead. Mina pulled the limp Naruto into a powerful hug. It hurt him, a lot. Almost every inch of his body was covered in damage and bruises, with massive cuts along his body. Thankfully, he was immune to his own fox fire, so the fire from the explosion actually didn't hurt him at all. It was the powerful explosions from the other fires in the explosion that had done some damage to him, not to mention getting thrown into the ocean hurt like a bitch. Is he too stupid to die? It was a common thought in the class. Got it, got my Tama back. Naruto let God of the Tama that was in his hand, letting it fall into the sand. He had gotten it back right as the explosion went off, he had a weak grin on his face. Mina flipped him over before she grabbed his face, and she didn't care that they were surrounded by everyone, and that everyone was watching them. Mina kissed him, and though they had shared many kisses in private with nobody watching, this kiss was perhaps the most passionate one that Naruto had ever gotten from Mina. Tears turned into smiles. Why was he not chosen for this power, why was it given to me? How could All Might not see that Naruto was suited for this power? Izuka looked down at his fist, and he couldn't help but feel the weight of the power he was given. Seeing somebody who should have gotten the power instead of him, it gave him an empty feeling inside. He had always thought, since All Might chose him, he had been the one most worthy of the power in All Might's eyes, but here, was somebody who had fully prepared to die today. Mina was crying on Naruto's face, but they were happy tears. Now this, this was a happy ending. Okay. Now can I go to a hospital or recovery girl? Everyone laughed when Naruto made that joke, until he coughed up blood. Okay, not a joke. That's it for part 5. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.